Um, their attention to detail seemed really good. And, um, you know, as the ball got rolling a little bit more, it made it an easy decision. Mike, uh, Joe Noga from cleveland.com, plain dealer. Uh, Chris Antonetti said uh, you've progressed to hitting off a tee. You're throwing to 120 feet. Where are you in your in your progress? And have you faced live pitching yet? What's uh, what's the the latest on your recovery? Uh, I've I've progressed into a normal off season routine. Um, progressed into you know hitting off the tee, doing some flips. Uh, have not hit live arm as in BP or, or velo machine, um, but continuing to try to make reps as important as possible you know obviously only playing 30 games last year <clears throat> is one of those things where you know I want to get the rest of my body um up to speed with where I want to be too you know there's there's a lot that go into swings whether it's obliques whether it's a bunch of things so building some reps reps so then when I challenge myself and get to that point um you know I'll be good to go but I've been uh symptom free gaining strength mobility has been great um so I've been able to you know continue what would be a normal off season for me and Mike, I'm Mandy Bell from MLB.com. I'm sure you're tired of answering these questions from the past year, but what was it like, uh, the symptoms that you had whenever you started to feel this thoracic outlet syndrome and, and what did that all entail? Yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of exams, a lot of trying to put the finger on it. But when I first had, I sort of felt like a, um, like a fullness in my shoulder. It felt like I had just done a workout and, you know, like I had uh, some swelling in there. Uh, the day it happened, it sort of then trickled down into my hand where I sort of had a little bit of numbness and tingling in, um, in three of my fingers. And it was sort of indication to, to TOS. And um, we sort of ran the gamut. We tried a bunch of stuff from, you know, Botox to try to get the, you know, the nerves in space to some other injections and, you know, it just sort of stemmed that surgery was the best option. Um, almost immediately after surgery, um, you know, symptoms subsided. So it was, it, it was the right call. You know, we left no stone unturned in trying to diagnose it. And, um, you know, I think the timing of when it happened, um, as in the surgery was right because now I can go and have a full off season and, um, you know, I'm not going through those beginning stages, uh, you know, in in the middle or the late off season. Mike, how much were you able to uh, observe or watch or, or take in of, of what the Guardians were able to do last season? And just from from both an offensive side where where they were pretty successful in uh, making contact, putting the ball in play, playing that brand of baseball. And then just on the other side of the plate where, you know, where you're going to have a lot of involvement with the pitching staff uh, and what they were able to do there. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you see where the backbone is of this team with, you know, pitching and defense, like, like most successful teams, I think being on the opposite side of it, you always know what teams have great arms and Cleveland has always had that. Um, so being able to see these young guys continue to grow to see, you know, what their numbers have turned into. I mean, obviously potential was always through the roof, but some of these guys are really piecing things together now. Um, you know, so I'm looking forward to coming in and, and continuing to share what knowledge I've learned over my career and uh, help these guys take the next step. And then on the offensive side, there, there's very few teams um, in the big leagues that, that have low strikeout profiles, a lot of contact. And those are the teams, you know, that, are tough to defend because they are, you know, they're, they're the anomalies now. There's, I mean, when strikeouts are up so high and three true outcomes, you know, they're, they're, you know, almost tougher to, you know, game plan for because the coverage on certain pitches um, is a little bit unpredictable because they're so good with their bat to ball skill. So it's exciting. The speed dynamic in the lineup is, you know, really enticing. Um, it, it's just different ways to affect games. And I think, there's a reason why you've seen that success that they've had the last, you know, year and, you know, growing from that. And I think with these young guys getting confidence, it's only going to continue to be better. You mentioned being on that, uh, you know, those early meetings, uh, Sandy uh, Alomar being in those meetings as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what's what do you look forward to in, in being able to work with uh, Sandy and, and what he's able to, to share with you? 
Yeah, I think when you when you look at what you know Cleveland's catchers have done defensively in the last, I mean, shoot, you can go way back. You can go, you mean you can go ten years back and how well their catchers have done. Um, you know, it's exciting to go work with somebody with the pedigree that Sandy has. Um, you know, he's the guy when you come in and you know first few thing people are saying, have you talked to Sandy yet? Have you met Sandy? Because they speak so highly of him. So I'm excited to you know get to work with him. You know, continue to work on my craft and. Uh, you know, have a fresh set of eyes on me to, um, you know, make some adjustments and, you know, continue to grow as a player. You have uh, two career stolen bases. Another thing that Sandy can help you with is uh, we, we've seen him, you know, Framo Reyes had uh, a couple of stolen bases there. Uh, you think Sandy can help you get a couple of uh, steals under your belt? I mean, I hope so. I mean, the, the, the steals I have, <laughs> they're not much to speak about. Um, but I, I will say with, you know, someone like me, I, I do have pitchers fall asleep on me quite a bit. So I'm sure Sandy could, could be some assistance there. And, uh, you know, it, it's always a column that, you know, as a catcher or, you know, a guy where speed is in his part of his game, it, it, it's always nice if you could put a, a number in that category, not have a zero. You're on mute, Paul. Yeah, Mike, as a, as a, as a catcher, um... You know, what when you look at, you know, a full season, what what do you consider a full season? How many games do you ever go into a season thinking how many games can I start or, you know, what you know, what, where is, you know, my my kind of ceiling? Uh, honestly, no. I mean, it, it's dictating. I mean, seasons are, are so dependent on, you know, things that we can't control in the catching position. You know, there's bumps and bruises you take. I mean, whether you're, you're doing a lot of blocking or foul balls, I mean, Early in my career, I was, you know, north of 120, you know, for the first handful of years. So uh, I think the dynamic has changed a little bit. I think you see that throughout the league. There's a lot, there's a lot more, um, you know, time shares in the terms of keeping guys a little bit fresher. Um, but I, you know, I, I prepare to be able to catch as many games as I can. I mean, I think the older you get, the more you've played this game at this level, taking care of your body, you know, becomes a precedent and you have to, know what your body needs. Um, a lot of that is trial and error with, with seasons. And, um, you know, you just do the best you can to take care of your body and, uh, you know, let the ball club dictate the lineup. But the more days you can be available is, you know, is, uh, is a necessity that teams need. Well, the Guardians have, a, you know, a, a young uh, prospect, Bo Naylor. How, you know, how do, if he comes up, I mean, I wonder how you would, work with him uh, you know and how you've worked with younger catchers in the past on on the different teams you've been yeah um I would do it with how you know veteran catchers has helped me in the past um just be an open book I mean it's a uh, it's a position where you know it's it's few and far between you know guys that get the opportunity to pass down some knowledge so uh, I just want to help him grow I want to be a mentor to him um, I'm looking forward to meeting him and you know I'm going to speak to him hopefully before spring training and you know, just start that relationship. You know, I have, I've had some great catchers in, um, you know, my career, you know, be able to pass on, you know, what they know, their knowledge, a little bit of those, you know, those, those little things that can help you over the edge, uh, help build relationships with pitchers. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm an open book when it comes to it, um, you know, and, and all to me, the game is about all passing down what you know, and I'm looking forward to start a relationship with him. Thanks. All right. Anybody else? Michael, thanks for uh, the short notice. Yeah, you got it. Anytime, guys. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike.